In this demonstration, we're going to go through basic provisioning a three-part array on the CLI or from the CLI. I do have the GUI right here that I'll, I'll pull up just so you can watch, you know, certain things kind of pop in a little bit. Um, but we're just going to SSH into our three-part. Now I've got a brand new three-part. There's nothing on it. Just got initialized. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and just do some uh, setup on that right now. So we'll get logged into that. Okay, so I'm just logged into, I use PuTTY, you can use anything, you can use the three-part CLI, you can use secure CRT, whatever you're comfortable with to SSH, SSH into your three-part. All right, so here's the array, and it has two default CPGs that came on it. Uh, I didn't create those, they, they ship it with a couple of starter CPGs, if you will. I've only got fast class, that's why you only see two uh, CPGs related to the fast class. Uh, in this uh, array, I've got 196 uh, PDs. All right, so uh, let's do a couple uh, little commands here just to give you a review real quick of the CLI. If you're familiar with Linux, Linux has manual pages or man pages if you need assistance. On the three bar, they have help. So you just type help and you can just hit help and it shows you a list of all the commands here that you can get help with. So let's just do like help show. All right, these are all the show commands that you can run. Uh, help, if I can type here, help, stat, all the statistic commands that you can run. All right, so there's there's a lot of information you can get on um, just from the help. So if you needed more info, you can say help, let's say um, show CPG, all right? So now it's gonna give you a man page a manual page of all the options related to the syntax show CPG. Okay, now there is about a 900 page user guide, uh, CLI guide that you can download from HP. I definitely recommend it if you're gonna be doing any CLI work. You can just, you know, it's a PDF, you can find whatever commands you need to and, and script them out. It's got a lot of information on it. For today's video, we're just gonna review a couple of quick commands and then we're just gonna do some basic provisioning. If you've seen the uh, video I've done before, on basic provisioning off of the GUI, you'll know that there's really three things we need to do, create a CPG, create a volume, associate that volume to the CPG, and export it, and we're done, right? So we're gonna go through those steps. All right, so beforehand, let's just get this, um, let's just show you a couple of things. So we can do a show sys, right? And it's gonna show the system, it has my name, the, um, not my name, my array's name. It has uh, the model that I have here. This is a V400, the serial number, how many nodes, there's four nodes in the system, and what the, uh, capacity of my system is. We can do a show space, right? This is my raw and usable free space. All right, that's initialized and ready to go. I can do a show license. It's all the licenses that are on the system. If you have a 7,000, they typically ship with 180 day, I think it's 180 day online import license. And one complaint that I have about that is that you have to, if you well, if you go beyond 180 days, then it, it becomes annoying because it alerts you that you're you know out of your license for that online import. Uh, HP is working on a way to get it to be ignored, but until then, you really have to go to the licensing center and create a new license that has all your software except for that temp key and then load it with the set command. So we do, you know, help set license. And this would be, you know, how you would set the new license key and you could do a show license. Sorry, and then so there's all the software again, but you just use that set command to, to write the new license key in there, okay? Um, in order to get that new license key, you have to go through, you know, setting up an HP password account, registering your three part to your account, and then you can go into uh, licensing and put in your SA, SAID, SA, yeah, SAID, and all that's required just to generate that new license key. So it's a little bit of a pain, but you can work through it. And in the description of the video, I'll actually put in some information related to the licensing center. And they're a great resource just to get that done. And they can help you link up your, your account to your, um, 
three par as well, and then also help you work through generating that new key. And it's a good idea to just have a backup of your license key anyway. Okay, so uh, it's just some extra steps you need to go through. I know that, like I said, three pars or HP is working on a way to um, that they're just going to that the the system will ignore that temp key. All right, moving on. All right, so let's do show node. This will show you all four nodes that I have in the system. The master node is node zero. As you know, 3PAR creates a mesh cluster of all the nodes, whether they're two, four, six, or eight nodes. Uh, one would be the master node, right? So if I had to reboot node zero to load firmware, then the master would just move to the next node. All 3PAR, if we were talking about firmware updates and OS updates, it does a rolling upgrade. So only one node would be going through that upgrade at a time and it would recycle. It would come back into the cluster and then the next node and the next node. So you don't take a, a big performance impact or any loss uh, or downtime related to during OS upgrades, which is just fabulous. Shows you that they're all online, they're all blinking green, so that's good. The memory here and then the total cache, and show node's good when we start doing uh, some statistic commands. Uh, I'll do another video on how to do like some basic performance stuff. This will show you the amount of cache that's available on the nodes. I have never ever seen in the years that I've worked with 3PAR, uh, any node actually struggling with cash related issues. Uh, I know a lot of other vendors, you know, say, well, they've got just a limited amount of cash and you have to understand the three part architecture and, and they don't get it. And that's why they keep stuffing more cash into their frame. Uh, when we do the, the uh, performance uh, reviews, then I'll show you what, how all that really works together and matters. But you know, you can always do a show node if you're just curious of how much available cash you have. And that'll show you what your, your cache availability is. Okay, so okay, moving on, I can get on a tangent. So let's just do uh, show CPG. It'll show the two CPGs. We see them up here in the GUI. These are the default ones. No space has been allocated. We do a show VV. And these are all the virtual volumes, right? So here's the two default virtual volumes. One's the admin volume for the array. The other one is the SR data volume for the on node system reporter database. And we can do a uh, show VV CPG, and this will show us uh, the VVs and their associated CPGs. Now, these aren't associated to a CPG, but we will throw this command up again after we do uh, create some storage here, and you'll, you'll see how that relates. Okay, so again, basic stuff, right? Um, so the first thing we have to do when we're provisioning our three parts, we have to create a CPG. So let's do um, create CPG. And then I have 196 uh, PDs in here. If you're um, familiar with the tuning CPG, the perfect CPG, or whatever you want to call it, a video I've got um, on YouTube here, you'll see how I calculate the space to make sure that the volumes are widely striped across the array. So that's what this string is for. And I'm going to do 144 uh, gig for my um, my growth increment size, my growth size, GS growth size. All right, so uh, I'm setting that, and then I'm going to do a, a RAID type. So type RAID 5, set size uh, 4. So that's RAID 5, 3 plus 1, 3 plus 1 equals 4, so set size 4. I have 8 cages in this array, um, so it's 4 cages per node pair. So that's why uh, 3 plus 1, or set size 4. Okay, um, and then... I've only got one type of disk, but I'm just going to put this in here so you can see how it works. So I'm going to pattern match a dev type. And if you remember, CPG only defines two things. It defines the RAID, which we've done here, and we're and the device type that you're going to be creating that CPG on. So we're going to say fast pass. If I had SSD or nearline, then I would specify nearline or SSD here to define that device type device type. Because I only have one type in there, I don't even need this um, dash p, this, pardon me a second, this whole string here. I don't, I don't need that in the, in the command, but I'm just putting it in so you can see how it works. And this growth size, this is, does not allocate space. Okay. So I'm going to show a show CPG when it's over. Um, just to be clear, the growth size just says that as it allocates capacity to the logical disk, how it's going to lay that out across all the drives to make sure that my stripe's wide. All right, so we've got um, the uh, RAID here defined, RAID 5, 3 plus 1, and we're on fast class. And I'll just give it a name. So let's say 3PAR Junkie 
CPG one. Boom, done. All right, so we do show, show CPG. Okay, we can see the CPGs there, and it just popped in to our screen above. There's no space allocated to it presently, right? So that's the first step, right? First step, create CPG. Second step is create a VV. So we'll say create VV virtual volume, all right? And then we just specify the CPG that we want this volume to be associated with so that it takes on those RAID characteristics and is written to that device type. So 3PAR Junkie CPG1. And now I just give it a, a virtual volume name. So we'll say 3PAR uh, Junkie VV, actually, 3PAR Junkie TP, no, no, VV1. Oh, we'll get to TPVV here in a second. And then the, the size, two terabytes. Okay, so before I hit this command, what I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm creating a virtual volume, three par, or yeah, three par junkie VV1. It's gonna be two terabytes in size, and it's gonna be associated to three par junkie CPG1. Now, the command line will by default create the virtual volume as fully provisioned, thickly provisioned, all right? The GUI will by default create the volumes as a thinly provisioned volume. So there's a big difference in, in which one does which. You have, to, you have to actually specify uh, that you want a thinly provisioned volume if you're using the CLI. So let's just hit enter. And one thing you're gonna notice, this is gonna be a fully provisioned volume. So up here, my CPG will then allocate space to that volume, all right? So what? CPG, three part junkie, CPG. Oh, you might have that command backwards. No, CPG. Great. Oh, great, VV. Yeah, CPG three par junkie. CPG one. It said that CPG wasn't found. Create VV. Am I? Losing my mind here. Three par junkie V one. Two terabytes. Oh, <laughs> I see it. I did. Uh, I I miswrote my CPG to CGP. All right. So my dyslexia caught up with me a little bit. Okay. So uh, create VV to that CPG, that VV, two terabytes in size. Sorry about that, all right. So now let's create another one. Oh, and you can see here, right, space was allocated, all right. So now let's create another one, but now we're gonna create it as a thinly provisioned volume. So create VV, now we just do a TP VV flag. And then we can specify that CPG again. And then three part junkie, TP VV one and then the size of that, two terabytes. Okay, so now you're gonna see just a little bit of space pop in there, right? But we can do a show VV CPG, and now we've got these virtual volumes associated to these, or this CPG, all right? And you'll see that this one is fully provisioned, right? And this one is thinly provisioned, so you got like a little bit of space that, that it writes into, and then it's a little bit of admin space so it can um, control the allocation to that VV. All right, so there we go. We've created a CPG, we created two virtual volumes. One's thinly provisioned and the other one is fully provisioned. All right, so in the GUI, you would then export this to a host. You don't export from the CLI, you create a VLAN or a virtual one. So here we're just gonna do a create VLAN and then I'm gonna specify the VV that I want to export. So let's say, uh, Three par junkie VV one. Three par junkie VV one. And then I would need to assign a LUN or I can do auto, but let's say you know two, and then my host. I've only got one host right now connected. So we're just gonna export that to blade seven, and we can do the same thing.
three. All right, so now we've got that. We'll do a show VLUN, and it says, here's our LUN IDs, our virtual volume names, and they're exported to that host, right? And if we just go quickly to the GUI, we can you know, go to here to export it, and here's the two VVs that we just created, all right? And they're exported to the host that I have here as well. Okay. All right, so now back to the CPG screen, we'll pull the command line back up. All right, so now we've, we've got that. So let's just kind of roll this back a little bit. So we, did, we created it, so now we're just gonna tear it all down. So I want to um, remove VLUN, uh, three part junkie VV1, and I have to put in its LUN ID because I can have this one volume export it to multiple hosts and in, 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 in its export, it could have a different LUN ID, right? So I need to specify that this volume, this LUN ID is being unexported from this host. All right, remove VLUN three part junkie TPVV1. LUN ID, I'm getting them right here from that show VLUN, all right? Three. Okay, so now if we do show VLUN, there's no VLUNs listed, right? There's no exports. I can still do a show VVCPG, and you can see that my virtual volumes are still there, and they're still associated to the CPG, and there hasn't been any, you know, right? They haven't been torn down completely yet. All right, so now we're going to do a remove VV TP, or, sorry, remove VV three par junkie TP VV one. It's going to say, do you really want to remove it? Yes. Now I'm going to do this one first because I want to highlight one thing, all right? Notice nothing was deleted. Well, I mean, it was deleted, but it wasn't, it, you didn't see any LD space get cleaned up. Right, and that's because it's a thinly provisioned virtual volume. So there, since there wasn't any data in it, there really wasn't any assigned LDs, LD space. All right, it was just waiting for data to be written into that. And then as soon as you start writing data into the TPVV, then the LD space gets assigned to it. So let's see the difference between doing that and deleting the, the regular fully provisioned volume. So when I go to remove this one, you're actually gonna see it drop all the logical disks that are associated with that fully provisioned volume because that fully provisioned volume now stretches across all the disks in the system. There we go. So we've, if we had that TPVV, that thinly provisioned volume, and we filled it, it would look similar. All right, but the fully provisioned volume, it had already pre-allocated all that LD space to that volume, so now it's gone too. And if we look up here. At this CPG, we'll see all the space has been reclaimed from that CPG because we dropped the volumes. Okay, so it's gone. So now let's remove CPG three part junkie CGP1. Do you really want to drop that CPG? Yes. And we'll see it disappear in the GUI here in a second. There it is. And you can see there's that CPG no longer resides in the system. So again, basic provisioning just shows you that you can do some of this stuff on the on the CLI as well. Um, in a you know previous system I was working with, I had to create uh, you know 47 volumes at once uh, over the CLI, and they all had to be or actually I had to create physical copies of all of one volume 47 times. And in doing that, I had to actually use it on the CLI. So, because I, you can't just do one physical copy in the GUI. Anyway, long story short, scripted it out, just ran it through the CLI, and everything was great. All right, so take the time. You know, go ahead and provision your storage if you're more comfortable doing it uh, on the GUI. But take your time. You know, when you get when you get a chance, and pull up that guide and see what commands you would have. You know, try to learn the commands that you would have used to provision it over the CLI, and you might surprise yourself. It might be a lot easier to do it that way, and then you'll never have to really concern yourself with the GUI again. All right, 
So that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for your time.